can we talk about menopause? This is day three of Vlogtober. Hi, I'm Bev. This month, October, is Menopause Awareness Month. So I am making Vlogtober, this idea of doing a video every day, about two main topics. One, menopause, because it's Menopause Awareness Month, and two, ADHD because it's also ADHD Awareness Month. And I, as a 58 year old woman, have gone through menopause and have also been late diagnosed with ADHD. So I thought what better way to raise awareness than to use Vlogtober here on YouTube to just talk about some of the things that we may or may not know about menopause and ADHD. And today I really wanted to get down to basics and talk about the different terminology around menopause and the different stages of menopause because I think for many of us it's the kind of words that we hear but we don't really know what they mean. So I've been working in the menopause awareness space now for over seven years. I've worked with big companies, small companies, big global corporate companies raising awareness and talking about menopause. I was a member of the British Menopause Society for a good few years. So I know a thing or two about menopause, not only from a personal experience, but also from many years of research, from many, many years of talking to, I guess, probably in reality, thousands of women who have been sort of working their way through all of the different stages of the menopause transition. I've also written a book about menopause called The Business of Menopause, A Guide for Working Women. So I think I've, over that time, you know, I've gained a hell of a lot of knowledge about this, but I do want to caveat here, I'm not a medical practitioner. So this isn't medical advice in any way, shape or form. If you need to see a, a health practitioner, please do. But hopefully this will at least give you a bit of an idea of the terminology that you, you need to use to make sure that you're using the right words. So let's start with some basics. Premenopause. Premenopause, a lot of people think, is the lead up to menopause, and it's not. Premenopause is the time before we start the menopause transition. It's the point from kind of puberty when our periods start to menopause when our periods stop. So for all of our adult reproductive years, we are pre-menopausal. Before that, we're prepubescent. When we get to menopause, it's the point at which our periods stop. And for sort of diagnostic purposes, and to ensure that we've given enough time to be sure that we're not gonna get another one, medical practitioners will normally ask, have you been period free? for 12 consecutive months. And if you have, they will deem you to have reached menopause. So a little bit of a fact here, menopause is actually just one day. It's the day, as I say, 12 consecutive period free months from the date of your last period. Assuming that there aren't any other factors such as contraception that are stopping your periods, that's how you would be defined as having reached menopause. Menopause, the word just means literally from, um, I think it's Latin, it could be Greek, derivative, menos meaning uh, monthly, pausos to stop. So in very, very loose terms, the stopping of our periods. And it's just one day. So everything leading up to that day, we are pre-menopausal. And everything after that day, until the day we die, we are post-menopausal. Now, some women might find that they do get a period after that 12-month period. I'm really hoping this is gonna pick up the my voice and not the dogs. Mad, mad dogs. Okay, where was I? So yes, post-menopausal till the day we die. So if menopause is just one day, what on earth is all the fuss about, you're probably asking. Well, actually there is another term called perimenopause, which has come into sort of common vocabulary more in, in more recent years. It's the point at which the body decides it's time to start shutting down our reproductive functioning. So the ovaries start to shut down, we start to release fewer eggs as our egg supply runs out, our hormones start to change, and it's that period through perimenopause, which means around the time of menopause, by the way, peri around the time of, 
And it's during that perimenopausal phase that we get to experience a lot of the symptoms that we may or may not be familiar with. I'm going to do another video on the symptoms and the vast range of symptoms. So it's perimenopause really that gives us the challenges as we go through that menopause transition. And perimenopause can start quite some time before we reach the point of our period stopping. For some women, it might be a couple of years. For others, it might be 10 years or more. And it's at the point at which the hormones are starting to become a bit more dysregulated. They can fluctuate. And it's those fluctuations in hormones that can cause a lot of the symptoms. I'm going to be covering this throughout the month of October. So if you want to um, make sure that you don't miss out on future episodes that will be going into other details around menopause and also ADHD as time goes by, hit the subscribe button and make sure that you don't miss them. So that perimenopausal phase can, as I say, last anything from a couple of years right up to maybe 10 years before we reach the point of menopause when our periods stop. And also those symptoms of perimenopause can last for a few years post-menopausal for the vast majority of us. Symptoms do normally settle down postmenopausally after a couple of years. Some women, unfortunately, do find that many of their symptoms go on for many years after. But there you go. So just a quickie today. They're the four stages. We've got premenopausal, our normal reproductive years, perimenopausal as the body is preparing for the periods to stop and we go into uh, full menopause, which is the, that one day when our periods have been gone for 12 consecutive months, and then we're into post-menopause. So I hope that helped. Um, some of you may know this already if you're of a post-menopausal age, which I know a lot of my audience are, but I do know that there are some younger people that watch this channel. And my belief is forewarned is forearmed. So knowing that perimenopause can start quite a long time before we stop having periods is really reassuring to know because when our body starts to make those changes and we start to feel different it's much easier if we understand that this is probably the start of our perimenopausal journey that's it for today the dogs have stopped barking the mower has been turned off <sighs> silence at last take care talk to you soon what are these connie Compies. what are they good for Spiders. Ah, spiders eat them? No, they're afraid of conkers. They're afraid of conkers, are they? So what do you do with them? Uh, I just like to put them around my house and then they don't really like them so they just don't come around in my house. Okay. Another rainy afternoon, I don't know what I'm to do. I just miss you more than anything.